unceasingly rations the light, a place struggling to emerge from decades of social darkness. But somehow, from Russia's bleak northern landscape, brilliance emerged. Alexei Yagudin, the reigning world champion. Yevgeny Plashenko, winner of the junior world crown two winters ago. An Olympic gold medalist, Alexei Urmanov. Through their artistry and spirit, they have dominated the medal stand this season. Tonight, Russia's future past and present compete for the year's grandest prize. Looking to stem their momentum come two men from the West. Elvis Stoiko, a former world champion seeking to regain his past form. And Michael Weiss, fresh off his first national title, is hoping that win was just the beginning. Dig in. The world's best collide tonight in Helsinki. The idyllic scenes that characterize most of Finland, a country of roughly five million, but that doesn't count the reindeer here. The landscape draped in snow. Near the top of the world, it is bitter cold, yet the locals still venture outside during the long winter months. As the sun sets on the capital city of Helsinki, the fans are heading inside Hartwall Arena, along with the best skaters in the world for the 1999 World Figure Skating Championships presented by MasterCard. And hi everybody, I'm Terry Gannon. Glad you could join us as we kick off our coverage here on ABC Sports of the most prestigious event in figure skating that is held annually. We'll be with you again Saturday afternoon at 2.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific when we'll have the ladies short program as well as the pairs free skate. And then in prime time, Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, we'll see Michelle Kwan try to capture her third world championship. We'll have the finals of the ice dancing competition then as well. But right now, the men are about to decide their title. Hard to imagine a deeper or more talented field than we have right here, right now in Helsinki. And we welcome in two-time Olympic champion Dick Button. Dick, Alexei Yagudin is the reigning world champion. He's from Russia. But it's not him, it's his countryman, 16-year-old Yevgeny Plushenko, who is in first place right now. Well, you know, at 16, Plushenko is on the verge of being the youngest man's world champion ever. And with his dazzling, you know, jumping ability and his wild steps, he's got a very good chance at that. But this one operative word here, and that's at 16. At 16, he can fluctuate wildly between some dazzling, dazzling programs and some rather untamed, unfocused performances. And I think that's the clue right there. How about the U.S. champion, though? Michael Weiss, only 22 years of age. He's come here to Helsinki. He's been terrific all week long. Well, you know, for the first time, not in practice, but in the actual competition, he completed his quadruple jump. And I'll tell you something, that gave him a whole lot of confidence, a whole lot. Uh, it pushed him to a new level of accomplishment. I think he's a new man. He's within a shot now of yeah. the medal. And I think he's been a different man and a different skater here just because of that. That quad in the qualifying round, but uh, he's in fourth place so there's no question he's within striking distance from one olympic champion to another brian boitano joins us now i want to talk about elvis stoico with you a three-time world champion we've seen him fight throughout the years he's helped really elevate this sport but over the last year the groin injury it hasn't been an easy year yeah well terry elvis is a man who is used to being on top He's the one who revolutionized the quadruple jump in competition. And now at 27, he finds himself in the position of the challenger to two Russian teenagers. When I talked to him after the short program, it was clear he was struggling to maintain his competitive edge after a year-long groin injury. But he said he's feeling better this week than he has in for the whole year. But the most important thing to remember about Elvis is you can never count him out. No, we've learned that over the years, as a matter of fact. Well, a little bit tougher for the men this year because the format is different. Three different rounds. The qualifying round worth 20%, the short program 30, and now the free skate worth 50% of the overall score. And here's your leaderboard heading into the free skate. Plashenko ahead of Yagudin and Stoiko. Michael Weiss in fourth. You can't count out Alexei Romanov either, the 94 Olympic champion. Then down the line, two other Americans, Timothy Gable in 13th place and Trifon Zivanovic in 14th in his first world championships. Next 
to skate is Timothy Gable, Yhdysvallat, the United States. And here is the U.S. bronze medalist, Timothy Gable, and he did it again this week. He completed a quadruple sal cow. Now he is the only man in the world to do that at the World Championships. That was in the qualifying round. And I talked to his coach, Carol Heiss, earlier today, and she said that after the national championships, he was bombarded with input of people of how to improve his skating. And finally, it just got so much that she told him, just forget about what everybody's saying and just skate. Chosen Malaguena for his music. And he's been choreographed by Alexander Zulin, the very talented Russian ice dancer. World champion himself, back in 93. Beautiful combination. Triple, triple. And that has been a volatile jump for him, so it's, it was a great combination. It's good that he started off the program that way. Choosing music like this is really a tough choice. It's a very difficult dance form. But what a beauty that was. Quad wow. style triple toe. Uh, he added a triple toe. Uh oh. Has he, oh no, that's just part of the, the move. That was an incredible combination. Quadruple Selko. Triple He's toe. Done it three times now in his career. The only man ever to do it, and that was in combination. Only 18 years old. Silver medal at the Junior World Championships in 97. Triple Axel. He is so slender hipped that I think that must help him somewhat in the quickness of the revolution in these really incredible jumps. He just tried a, a quadruple toe loop and he almost did it. Now he throws in a triple loop right there. He's playing gutsy tonight. Yeah, but you see the the business the business of throwing these moves in is very offsetting you should be concentrating on your next moves not how you're going to change them and that's one of the difficulties of this the rules of this competition Hydroplaning move into a, a very beautiful triple salt out. He 
he, sh he sure made an impression in his first world. His parents, Jenny and Richard, yeah, I think, I think he made a pretty nice impression, as a matter of fact. How about making history in his first senior world championship? Brilliant, brilliant jumping. The revolution in the air as tight as anybody that we've ever seen. 18 years old. You don't think his future's bright, do you? The bronze medalist from the U.S. National Championships, Timothy Gable, will have his marks when he returns. In Helsinki, Timothy Gable, after his performance here in the free skate, is coach Carol Heiss Jenkins, an Olympic champion next to him. Here's his quad uh, quad sow triple toe combination. Watch, he doesn't get a lot of height, but he's so quick. Watch his left arm right there. It releases. He has to reset it before he goes up in the air on his triple toe. First time that has been done at the World Championships, of course. First set of marks now for Timothy. A 4.7. 5.5 and 5.6. Uh, they must have been, felt that there was a mandatory markdown, or, or else uh, they're holding him down in, in, the, in the overall, you know, comparative to the other skater. And a 4.9 for presentation from the same judge. Well, that is not far from the 5.0s or the 5.1s. He is, though, in first place in terms of those that have skated in the free skate. Thank you. Next to skate is Zheng Zingguo in China. Here is 23-year-old Zheng Jin Guo in eighth place after the short program and part of the rapid rise of Chinese figure skaters. Each of the last two years in the free skate at Worlds, he's done two quads in this long program. Watch how light he is on his feet and watch how relaxed his body stays going into the jumps, which, which helps him be quick in the air because he has lightning quick reflexes. Alexo. Wonderful distance on that. That is huge. <laughs> How effortless did that look? The interesting part was that it was a long jump. Mm -hmm. I mean, a jump is not, not only supposed to go up, it's supposed to go out. And he did. Watch how quick this is, his quad toe. Up. A little far forward, but still hung on to it. Triple Lutz, triple toe. He threw in the triple toe that he didn't do after the quad toe because that was meant to be a combination in the quad jump. Well finished 12th at last year's World Championships. Had a better finish, though, at the Olympic Games where he placed 8th. And he's 8 here, 8 here after the short program. Well, I like the fact that he's wearing his wristwatch because most performers don't wear their wristwatches when they're performing. He's got some place to go. <laughs> that tells him how far into the program he is. A little slower of an entry. The speed across the ice going into that wasn't as fast. That's why it wasn't as big as the first one. He's a brilliant athlete, just brilliant. The revolution, the height, the distance that he gets in his jumps is extraordinary. Unfortunately, there's not much excitement 
in the personality of his skating. That spin uh, didn't help him or add to the artistry of this program. Well, the interesting thing about him is when he gets tired and he misses jumps, he just pitches him forward a little bit. He doesn't fall like the other guys. He's like a cat who always lands on his feet. seems to be slowing down somewhat now. Four minutes, 30 seconds, the time for the free skate. And now he's got three rounds of competition to go through. He does look fatigued, and if he's going to try another quad, it's going to be coming up, and that is pretty late in the program. No, he did not. That spin just doesn't have any zing to it or position or style, and I think that'll hurt him in the second mark. Yeah, did you see the crossed eyes at the end? <laughs> and the way he looked over there, that's the first spark of personality he had in the whole program. That wristwatch didn't move fast enough, did it? <laughs> that was a long four minutes and 30 seconds. Zheng Zin Guo of China, though. Well, one He's brilliant a athlete. athlete. Yep. Right now, Timothy Gable has joined Leslie Visser backstage. Leslie? Terry, he's young, he's proud, he's happy, and he made history. Can you talk a little bit, Tim, about being the first to hit a qual sal triple combination? Uh, well, I knew going into this event after I landed the quad in qualifying, it was the first quad sal at a world championships, and uh, I knew if I did the quad triple that it would be the first of that too and I was kind of hoping to do two quads that would have been the first to do two different quads in a program but I was close but not quite there. Did you feel it tonight? It seemed that you were so on and so confident out there. I did. I felt really comfortable this week. Uh, all my practices have been good. The warm-up was really good and I just went out there knowing in my heart that I could could do what was in my program. Well, he said he was never going to come to a Worlds until he had earned it. That he did. Congratulations. Back to you, Terry. When we continue from Helsinki, 18-year-old Takeshi Honda, twice the national champion of Japan. He'll skate next. Artwall Arena. Zheng Jin Guo of China awaiting his mark. And this quadruple jump shows his athletic ability, even though he had a problem on the end. Look at the height and the distance. And he hung on to it. He did not splat. And this combination, a triple Lutz, beautiful height, wonderful revolution, stepping right down into a smooth, smooth triple toe. I mean, that's as good as it comes. Two sets of marks, the first one for technical merit. And as you look at those, remember, if he can finish in the top 10 overall, China will get two spots in next year's World Championships. And one of the judges that has been holding everything back has a very low marks has been the Slovakian judge. She gives him, or he gives him, a 5.6 at this point. And now the second set of marks for presentation 5.1 up to 5.5 the range, five, but good enough one. to put Guo in first five, place three, right now in terms five, of those that have two, skated here in the free skate. Five, five, and five, four. So here is 18-year-old Takeshi Honda of Japan, twice the national champion of Japan in seventh place after the short program. There you see his finish at the 98 Worlds, and he has a quad planned in this program as well. And after a coaching change that he made, he seems more self-assured and focused, but he's really putting that concentration to the test because he didn't have his greatest skate in the short program. The music, the man in the iron mask.
necessary to do a quad, it will be right here, a quadruple toe jump. Beautiful, beautiful quad toe loop. That's the one that he missed in the short program. He's got to feel great about that. There was a time when all the talk about quad mania may have been hype, but not anymore. Three in a row. Every Gable, Guo, and now Honda, who have done quads. Look, everybody is doing every triple and every quad in the business right now. You've got to do them brilliantly. You've got to do them with height and suspension and good position. Otherwise, forget it. It's just another jump. The day of the rarity of the quad has long since passed. He had a triple axle, triple toe planned in the opening. He's about to do his repeat triple axle. He didn't do a combination in the beginning, so he has to do a combination here. But let's see if he has enough energy to make it into a triple, triple, or if it's going to be a triple, double. Ah, the triple is a little bit backwards. Just but, you jumped know. out of it. Just jumped out of it. thing here, the triple sauka, that's his hard thing. Now he feels fabulous because all he has to do is ride it out to the end of the program. So maybe now is the time to note that he's musical, that he has a sense of dance a presence that we've seen really for the first time this year. This performance, he has proved a lot to himself. He kept focused, he did all the hard things, and he had a great skate. And he knows it. And I think added to that is that there's a very strong artistic quality here. He's very musical, he follows the beat and the melody beautifully, and on top of that, he takes his time stylistically. There's certainly a very strong movement presence there, and that is nice to see. Takeshi Honda of Japan, his effort in the free skate. We'll see what the judges thought when we come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Takeshi Honda of Japan still thrilled with what he did here in the free state moments ago. 
And on his quad toe, watch how he stays ever so slightly forward instead of straight up and down on the axis. It makes, it, it makes you be able to be quicker and land it better. Zheng Jin Guo, the leader right now, when you talk about those that have already skated, those are wonderfully powerful, Mark. Wow. And you know, add that, add to that, the, the, the quality of dance, the way he's developed poise, the way he takes his time with his individual moves, which will result in this mark, I think, being quite substantial. And it is, it's the best of the program so far. The presentation marks, what immense free skate we've got going on with Gable, with Gro, with Honda, setting new standards in terms of the quad jumps and the performances. Coming up next, a generational showdown in the men's free skate. Yevgeny Plushenko, at 16, he could become the youngest men's champion in history. Alexei Yagudin, the 19-year-old reigning world champion. Michael Weiss, 22 years of age and still celebrating his first U.S. national title. 25-year-old Alexei Ermanov, who's five years removed from his Olympic gold medal. And three-time world champion Elvis Stoika. A world champion will be crowned when we return to Helsinki. Championship B without some controversy. The pair's free skate, which took place last night, had its share, and it involved the judges. Leslie Visser has more. Terry, there could be something fishy in Finland. Two of the nine international judges were captured on tape, possibly signaling to each other. During the free skate of the pair's competition won by Berezhnaya and Sikarolidze, it appears the Russian and Ukrainian judges could have been collaborating. Does it seem the Russian judge on the right is moving his foot with intent while the Ukrainian judge is watching? Chairperson Sally Ann Stapleford spoke for the judges. I guess I can see with everybody else that, that there was some kind of, of contact, but whether it was concerning the skating, it, it's, um, you can't say. But judges are forbidden any communication, as it states in Rule 426, judges are not permitted to converse with one another or to indicate errors by action or sound. You say to the judges um, that once they're on the stand, they are viewed, I said, you've got television cameras everywhere, everybody is focusing on you, so please keep absolutely focused ahead. I said, don't let anybody give you, give them an opportunity to criticize you, because people will criticize, rightly or wrongly. They will say, oh, you were talking about that, you were talking, so never give them a chance of criticizing you. Sally Ann Stableford said that as of this moment, there is no reason for reprimand, but that the judges tonight will be even more vigilant in appearing solitary in their decisions. Well, in other news, the skating world was shocked to hear of the impending retirement of longtime coach Richard Callahan, who directed Tara Lipinski to the Olympic gold and guided Todd Eldridge throughout his career. Richard Callahan told me that after 27 years, he is simply tired of the travel, and he said, quote, there are no other circumstances involved in this decision. He said he'd like to stay on with Todd Eldridge as a consultant, and that for this competition, he has signed a three-week agreement to coach Angela Nikodinov. Terry? All right, Leslie, thank you. Straight ahead from Helsinki, Michael Weiss and the final group of skaters eye the gold medal. The men's title is on the line next the world with dreams of gold to face Michelle Kwan for the world title. Will Michelle retain her crown or will another woman become the new golden girl? The ladies short program Saturday at 2.30 and then the ladies final Saturday night at 8. The world figure skating championships presented by MasterCard on ABC. Welcome back to Helsinki everyone. The final group of skaters have taken the ice to warm up here in the men's free skate what an evening it's been already in terms of pushing the boundaries of your sport. Timothy Gable, 18-year-old from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, the first quad sound triple toe loop combination in history. You know, there are so many quadruples being thrown out by practically everybody in this championship that it's no longer exclusive. One after the other they're doing them, and there have been some beauties. Zheng Xin Guo of China held on for his, and then Takeshi Honda had a beautiful... And look at the ease of it, and the lightness of it. I mean, the jumping here is spectacular. So already, it's been a great night, but here is the final group, and there's your overall leader, Yevgeny Plushenko, at the age of 16, could become the youngest men's world champion in history, if he can hold it together for the next four and a half minutes when he takes the ice. 
Right behind him in second place, the reigning world champion, Alexei Yagudin, his countryman from Russia. He's had an injured left calf, but it hasn't slowed him down at all throughout this competition. And the three-time world champion, Elvis Stoiko of Canada. What a tough year and a half he's had trying to come back from the groin injury. He's battled his way to third place and in a position perhaps to win. And there's Michael Weiss. Terrific week. He is in fourth place overall right now. He had his first quad jump ever in competition during the qualifying rounds. And he started out this practice session with enormous energy. Well, ever since Dick Button, our colleague, took this sport higher and higher back in the 40s and the 50s, the jumps have just continued to evolve. They've gotten higher and higher as well. And now, as Dick tells us, the quad has become the benchmark for the men these days. In a sport known for artistry and grace, the quadruple jump, a move of raw power and athleticism, is now defining men's skating. The quad, it defies gravity, and it's a true test of courage. Rotation can happen quite easily when we leave the ice. However, controlled rotation is another, another thing. Um, you can see guys jumping in the air and spin as many times as they can, but have no idea where they are. That is what makes the quad so difficult. Airborne for less than a second, the difficulty of the quad is magnified when attempted under pressure. After several attempts, U.S. national champion Michael Weiss was just credited with his first quad in competition this week. There's only a handful of people in the world right now that can do a quadruple jump, and you know, you think of it as just one more rotation, but uh, you know, one more rotation is ten times harder. <laughs> Imagine trying to jump up in the air and spin around four times. Now imagine balancing on a very thin piece of steel and gliding on a very slippery surface. And you have to go from one foot, jump up, turn around four times, and land on one foot, gliding backward. Until a few years ago, the quad was performed by few men. But today, skaters are doing it in combination with other jumps. Three-time world champion Elvis Stoiko has pioneered many combinations, but still feels added pressure before attempting them. You usually in practice you feel the timing, you know it. But when you go to competition, you're numb. You're nervous, you're stressed, and now you gotta trust it. That's a whole different ball of wax. That's why it's so difficult. In the 11 years since Kurt Browning changed the course of figure skating with the first ever quad at the 1988 World Championships, skaters have continued to raise the bar. Now the quad is not only allowed in the short program, but it's almost becoming a necessity. The sport has definitely reached a level where, for the male skaters, they have to be able to do eight triples in a quad. Um, I, I think it'll be a rare situation where one of the men becomes a world champion without that kind of a long program. Nonetheless, Kurt Browning and Elvis Stoiko remain the only world champions to have won with a quad. 1996 champion Todd Eldridge won when he impressed the judges with a program full of brilliant triples. If you've got a skater that goes out and, and does all his triples great and has great style, then the judges have to kind of decide what's, what's more important in, with the program. The philosophy that we are being preached at is, is that you award a clean jump a higher mark than a poorly performed jump. So that we should reward a clean triple a higher mark than a, a poorly performed quad. Whether the 1999 world champion will need a quad remains to be seen. But clearly, the quadruple jump is the future. Well, the future seems to have arrived ahead of schedule it's already here and Brian Gentlemen, is there any downside to this quad mania well I think it's going to take their it's toll on their longevity the window of peak performance may get smaller to one or two years because it's so physically demanding how about Blashenko now what can we expect from him tonight well, what you look for with Bloshenko, eight triples. Now, this is his strength. The speed going into them, the height, the quickness of rotation. With his quad, look for him to repeat it if he misses it. With the Beelman spin, it's a show of flexibility, which is unusual for a male skater. And with maturity, well, youth works for him on one level. That's technical level. And yet on the artistic level, it works against him. How about Elvis Stoiko, Dick? Well, you've got pretty much the same group of things. There's going to be the usual eight triples, and he is really a powerful jumper right down the line. He, you're going to have to watch every one of those. He's got two quads planned. Now, that, that, that is right at the peak of the situation. Remember his footwork. It's strong, it's powerful, it's very fast. 
he has learned to develop in this area. But the main question is, will he go all out because of his groin injury? Well, sit back and enjoy a who's who list in this final group. The order in which they will skate, Elvis Stoiko takes the ice first, then it's Alexei Yagudin, the reigning world champion, Alexei Ermanov, the 94 Olympic champ, then Plashenko, the leader, Andrei Vleshenko of Germany, and Michael Weiss, the U.S. champion, will skate last. This to skate is Elvis Stoiko, Canada, Canada. He is in third place but he does not control his own destiny. With the new format, he needs some help to win the gold medal. Here is Elvis Stoiko. The music from the motion picture Merlin. And when I talked to him today, he said he was relieved with the first skating order because he's been skating last in so many important competitions this year. He wants to just skate, get it over with, and watch the rest of the competition. thinking of another quad that he does have planned is making sure that you don't make the mistake on that. is the maturity of his skating. He's taking his time with these movements. They're choreographically presented. They're musically good. And this is second quad. Ah, yeah. good, yes, good boy. You really have to respect him for the way he has handled himself in spite of this injury. And in many ways, he was the man who started all of this about the quad combination. 1997, he did the first quad triple. He was the one who started doing them consistently in competition. And that the other guys rose to the challenge. At 27 years of age, though, speaking of the toll that you mentioned earlier, it takes on your body, you wonder how long he can continue on this level. And especially when you're dealing with an injury like he has for a year, it exhausts you to deal with something like that. Triple axle, he really needed that. That was great. Watch this flying sit spin, this change sit spin. Very hard jump, spin. Fifty 
seconds into a program. There's now another triple Lutz. You know, the thing I love about Elvis' is skating, he's always fighting. He might do a jump not as well as he could, but he always fights through the whole thing, and that's what he's doing right now. Final move, a triple Salco. Good for him. I've got to take my hat off for him. But he knows it wasn't perfect with the miss early on. He may have needed to be perfect when you've got Alexei Yagudin and Pleschenko ahead of him. Elvis Stoiko in his attempt to win his fourth world championship here in Helsinki. Watch on this quad toe, his left leg reaches back so far and he gets into this rotation so quick, right there. Makes four turns, lands it a little low, low in the knee, but he makes it up into the double toe afterwards. So Elvis now awaiting his score. And the first set, 5.6 to 5.8. And really what, you, what those scores reflect is that he didn't have a triple-triple combination tonight. And five seven. Thank you. And now the second set for presentation, five point five to five point seven. And Elvis in the lead, at least momentarily. When we come back, the 19-year-old from St. Petersburg, Russia, the reigning world champion, Alexei Yagudin, in second place, trying to capture the gold medal. After this message, and a word from our ABC stations world champion getting ready to skate Alexei Yagudin another Russian skater who has joined the exodus to the US that really began in the early 90s his move this past year was extremely emotional as Leslie Visser tells us it was not taken lightly for each competitor at Worlds nationalism mixes with personal pride each time Alexei Yagudin watches the Russian flag being raised he must come to terms with the decision he made to leave his country behind when Ilya Kulik won the gold medal in Nagano, Yagudin criticized Kulik's decision to emigrate from Russia to train in Massachusetts. Yet last June, Yagudin made the same decision for himself. He came to train with Tarasova in the United States, claiming he had no choice. I didn't leave my country. My country left me. I was born here, and I'd prefer to live here. If my country had created normal working conditions for me to develop and make progress in the sport, I would not have left. Yagudin is ambitious. He wants to win another world championship and eventually an Olympic medal, and doesn't believe that's possible training at home, where the economic conditions have worsened since the Soviet Union collapsed. One cannot always live like an animal in Russia. It's simply impossible to skate. I can't hear the music. They're constantly welding. The smell of cement, and dust, and dirt make it impossible to breathe. There's no warm-up room, no training equipment. You have to deal with so much ahead of time. When you come out on the ice, you're exhausted. Difficult conditions were only part of the reason for leaving Russia. The other was his coach, Alexei Mishin. Yagudin began training alongside Mishin's other stars, Yevgeny Kushenko and Alexei Armanov, completing the most dominant triumvirate in men's skating. Yet Yagudin became dissatisfied with the reality of having to share a coach. Since he had to pay equal attention to everyone, he couldn't pay more attention to me. He had no right. I, on the other hand, am the kind of person who needs more influence and attention and care. It is much easier to train in America. You come and warm up calmly in a special place. Beautiful music is playing. It's warm there. You feel so much easier and lighter. Everything is calm, clean, and convenient. Yagudin's former coach disagrees. He believes adversity, not comfort, will make his skaters tougher. Hunting dog with a full stomach never runs fast. Empty stomach, better. 
not in Yagudin's case. Since leaving Nishin, the reigning world champion has dominated the season, defeating his former training partners at two major events this year. Yagudin became world champion with Nishin. Can he stay there without him? Alexei Yagudin, Venaya, Russia. Well, the reigning world champion now coached by Tatiana Tarasova and living, training in Freehold, New Jersey. Here he is in second place, taking the ice for his free skate, trying to win his second consecutive world championship. Alexei Yagudin. The music, Lawrence of Arabia. Triple axle, triple toe. What a great way to open. It is definitely a different experience skating as a defending world champion because you feel the people behind you who want your title, and that's a lot of pressure. But you have something to lose. And this is his quadruple. Beautiful. Boy. Came in earlier in the week with a slightly injured leg. He had an injury in his left calf. Bothered him during qualifying, but did not during the short program, and it certainly hasn't here. Second triple axel. Enormous. He's got all of the three of his biggest guns over now. So now it's just pacing himself and hitting everything else. He's skating better than he has in practice. He is going to make those guys work if they're going to try to steal his title away. And remember, if he wins the free skate, he is the overall winner. Circular footwork. Follows the music. If he keeps going at this pace, it's going to be hard for anyone to beat him because he is such a well-rounded skater. His marks for technical will be high as well as his marks for artistic. Evgeny Kleshenko, the 16-year-old, still to skate in first place after the short program. And even though they shared the same coach at one point, Alexei Misha, they're not exactly close these days. Michael Weiss still to skate too. Series first a triple Lutz. He 
is exhausted. He has spent all his energy, you can see. And a fi right? final <laughs> combination. But you notice that same thing happened with Stoiko. The energy output is extraordinary. That was incredible. Look at him fall off the end of the program and not even yeah. hold that position. He's not even attempting to hide the fact that this is exhausting. That number of triples and quadruples, good grief. Can they ever even just skate in between it? Oh my God. Alexei Yagudin just drew a line in the ice. If you're going to top that, you better bring your aim game to the table. I can't think of a jump he could have done better. The reigning world champion trying to hold on to his title. When the men's free skate continues, don't count Alexei Urmanov out yet. In fifth place, the 94 Olympic champ looking to move up. Alexei Yagudin just now catching his breath. What, look at this. First of all, this magnificent triple axle. Watch that forward head, the height, the straightness. Oh, my goodness, as he then does a triple toe loop. That is picture perfect. And watch this, his quad, his quadruple toe. Look, watch him turn, stretch, reach, point. Look at the lean on the body, but it comes out just perfectly. And for that, he deserves to be able to do this. <laughs> Still only 19 years of age. You forget that with all that he's accomplished. The reigning European champ, world champ. Well, you know, he had one great thing to prove, and that was that he was right in changing coaches from Mission and moving to America with Tatjana Tarasa. Look at Oh, wow! Oh, at this early stage in the game, he gets himself a six. Now that's guts on the part of that Polish judge. Woo! Five, eight, five, oh my, eight. oh my. But if you notice it, there's still a couple of tenths of points, points left. For presentation now, Dick. Ah, right, five, right up there, eight, right up there. Five, this is going to be a really five, tough five, thing if Prashenko wants to pull up five, over here. Five, So it's Alexei Yagudin in the lead over Elvis Stoiko, and then Takeshi Honda of Japan, who is in third place. How'd you like to try to follow that? Well, that's the perfect place to follow somebody when they've already got the audience and everybody's excitement up. You don't want to come on after a dummy has given a really mediocre performance. This is the place to be. Nothing mediocre about that. Alexei Ermanov the 94 Olympic champion in fifth place after the short program. Well, I'm glad Dick would like to follow him because if we were competing in the same event, <laughs> I, didn't I would me. let him have that skating order, okay? <laughs> Listen, don't do what I say, just do what I do, which is I wouldn't want to follow him either. <laughs> but anybody in the theater always wants to follow something that's good, that gets the audience going. And that's why there's great intensity now on Ermanov's first moves. Well, not to oversimplify this to the quad, we've talked about that enough tonight, but he has not completed one successfully since before the groin injury at the 97 World Championships. And his was the easiest one that, that was out there. That was supposed to be a triple axle, triple toe combination. So he's the, later on when he does his repeat triple axle, he's going to have to do it in combination. You like to get the combination over at the beginning because you're much more fatigued at the end. the 
second triple axle. And he did it with a double toe loop, but not a triple toe loop. For anyone who's counting revolutions at this point, which I doubt must be very few people. This is the one title internationally that has eluded Alexei Romanov. He won an Olympic gold medal. He has won the European Championship, but never a world championship. He has a very interesting quality in his jumping. He always seems to go up into the air leaning and then straighten out and land on a straight edge. It's almost like a cat-like quality. Uh, that's supposed to be a triple loop. That's been avoid him, avoiding him this year. I don't think I've seen him hit that triple loop too much this year. And there he is trying it again. He did the triple loop. He changed it from a triple toe loop because it's a higher degree of difficulty. That's because he heard you say that it's been avoiding him <laughs> and he wanted to prove he could do it. I'm glad he did. He has always had his own distinctive style of arm movement, like that hand right there. Not his best job, but it was a good job. He's a well-rounded skater. I enjoy watching him. He has a very classy, classy approach to skating. 25 years of age, a five-time Russian national champion, and of course the Olympic champ in 94, Alexei Ermanov. And Alexei Yagudin backstage, finally catching his breath, a job well done. Now he has to wait and watch. When we come back, the Russian champion, 16-year-old Yevgeny Plushenko, has very little margin for error. If he's going to be the youngest men's champion in history, he'll skate next. Observe technical merit. Five, five. The World Figure five, Skating six, Championships presented five, by six, Mastercard, continuing five, with the men's free skate five, and Alexei five, Urmanov looking five, at his six, first set of marks. Five, three. Five, three, Best he could hope for five, is to four. get into the top three from that fifth Present place eight. after the short and medal, but it five, is eight, unlikely five, at this seven, point. For presentation, 5.5 five, 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 to 5.8, five, five, so he is five, in seven, third right now, five, seven, but that's momentarily. Five, seven, and five, eight. So here are your top three. Alexei Yagudin, then Elvis Stoiko, and Alexei Romanov as the 16-year-old from Russia takes the ice for his free skate. Yevgeny Plushenko trying to win his first world championship. He finished third last season. He's the reigning Russian national champion, but he's got his work cut out for him because Alexei Yagudin was brilliant. 
an interesting thing is Koshenko was the, the one on practice this morning that was in his own bubble. He was paying attention to himself. Everybody was watching him, but he wasn't watching anyone else. Trying to become the youngest men's world champion ever. Without wasting time, his first move will be his quadruple attempt. Here it is. Oh, a little, a little cheated on the landing and a hand down. Let's see if he repeats it like he's done so many times before. And funny, he had a great quadruple in both the quarterfinal, quarter round, and the short program. Here, triple axel. Triple tolo. Exquisite jump. He actually started off the program where it looked to be a little tight. He wasn't going as fast as he usually does, and he wasn't as quick as he usually is, but he seems to be loosening up now. You see, that's a nice position. Axel Jones. Did you notice how controlled it was on the exit? <laughs> triple up, triple toe Those are the things that can pop him ahead of Elvis Stoika because Elvis didn't do any triple-triple combinations tonight. This kind of footwork, one of his specialties. He has a little bit of claw. Ooh. Certainly has a flair with this. so he can finish the rest of the program. <laughs> in the short program, in fact, which is only two minutes and 40 seconds, he had a tough time at the end of that. Ooh, look at that. Talk about a cat landing on his feet. This camel spin, interestingly, it's sighted off in the corner of the ring, which is not a good place to, to see it. This program, not as choreographically complete or as dramatic as Yagudin, but he certainly is doing well with it. Look at these wonderful steps. giving every ounce of energy here at the end because he has no more technical things planned. And this is final spin. Now watch the combination of positions. First the camel, sit spin. Now watch him catch that foot all on Denise Bielman and pull it up. Wow! Spin slowed at the end. It didn't quite help him through to the end of the performance. But what a what an overall quality of jump. 
probably had to be perfect to overtake Yagudin at the top. I think, I think it was more than being perfect. It was the quality of the artistic input of the program. His jumps were wonderful all the way through. But the whole impact of what Yagudin did was dramatic. His target may be Albert Stoiko, who's in second place right now. Yevgeny Plushenko of Russia, 16 years of age. And remember, still to come, the U.S. men's champion, Michael Weiss, will continue with the men's free skate after this message and a word from our ABC station. Plushenko sitting alongside Alexei Mishin, who used to coach Alexei Yagudin, of course. And here he is on his quad toe attempt. Watch when he goes in the air. He drops his right shoulder a little bit. He starts leaning over to the right, and he just has to touch his hand down. But this combination spin has a wild variety of positions, the best of which is this Bielman spin, where he pulls himself self up over there. That really is limber. All right, so where do they put him right now? Let's see the first set of marks. Not high enough. You can see it already without even comparing it. Well, at least not for you. Yeah, good, and there's no question about that. Five, now the second seven. set for presentation, 5.7 five five to 5.9, five five so eight. he is now in second five place eight. behind Yagudin, and he has overtaken five that seven. spot, which was held five by Stoiko. Eight. Well, five it's been eight. a great, great group of skating uh, programs, I'll tell you that. So it's Alexei Yagudin, Yevgeny Plushenko, two Russians in the top two spots, Andres. then Elvis Washington. Stoiko, the three-time world champion from Canada, in third. And this is Andre Vleshenko of Germany taking the ice in sixth place after the short program. Four times he's been the national champ of Germany, twice the Latvian champion before he moved to Germany. He's also one of the most elegant skaters of all. Well, Dick, if you wouldn't have minded skating in that position that Ploshenko just skated, and you love skating in this <laughs> position, because that's hard right after two great programs. And the audience may need a rest right now. Which will bode well for Michael Weiss. Double Saukau for that triple Saukau. He's going to have to do this upcoming triple axel in combination because he didn't do it in combination before. Ah, and he popped it into a single axel. this flying change sit spin. That's very nice. Sit spin could be a little lower, but the air position was first rate. Andre, 24 years old, and on the scene for some time now. This is fifth trip to the World Championships. He placed fifth a year ago.
back stem. certainly is. Andre Vlashenko, 24 years of age, from Germany in sixth place after the short program, was hoping to move up with that effort in the free state. When we come back, Michael Weiss tries to earn a medal by riding the momentum of his win at this year's U.S. Championships. It was great for me to go out and uh, skate two solid programs. Uh, it's more of a relief for me than anything just to get it out of the way and just get that first title out of the way. Um, you know, hopefully I can uh, carry that confidence and use that as a stepping stone for me to, uh, to skate here at Worlds. For Todd Eldridge, the World Championship had been an elusive goal. But in 1996, the five-time U.S. champion came into the free program in second place and proceeded to hit his triple combinations and triple jumps flawlessly. Yes. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. After winning his first world championship, he draped his gold medal around his biggest fan, his mother Ruth. Two, five, three. Back in five, Helsinki, five, those are the four, first nine, marks four, for Andre Vlashenko. He is not pleased at all. Five, five, he was in five, sixth six, place six, after the short five, program, six, and with those presentation five, marks now, he drops five, down to eight. Five, 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 four, five, five. Thank you. So here are the overall standings at the World Figure Skating Championships presented by MasterCard as the final skater takes the ice. Yagudin, Lushenko, and Stoiko, your top three. And it's Michael Weiss, the U.S. men's champion, who certainly has a chance to get on the medal stand. Elvis Stoiko in third, that's who he has in his sights. And Michael Weiss has been off the ice for close to an hour, and it's cold in here. So if he can skate well, after he knows that these guys have skated so well before him, he's done a lot in being able to deal with the pressure. Is dead, Greg? Positions in his back and his style have improved dramatically this year. This is his quadruple. Too, a little too footed on the landing. Slight back inside edge, but you know it was a good solid, uh, a good solid attempt. Elvis fell on his first quad attempt, came back later with one. Michael Weiss pulled off his first successful quad in qualifying earlier this week. This is triple axle combination. Double colors.
Good triple-triple combination. And he's going to need that if he's hoping to catch Elvis in third place. so nervous is the way he skids off the entrance edge. That keeps him from getting the height that he should be able to get, which is more than what he's getting now. But it was a very good jump, very solid, and will be perceived well by the judges. that spin and followed it through, I think it would have had much, much more effect, as good as that effect was. He's skating well for this high pressure position that he has to skate. He has one triple left, and he's, he's done a good job. His entire performance in this championship in every one of the divisions has been infinitely superior. What a relief off of his mind. This final spin combination. <laughs> hard to imagine he expected much better than that in fact there's his wife lisa hard to imagine that he expected much better all week his father greg been a terrific week for michael weiss now the question is was it good enough to catch elvis stoko who is in third we'll find out <laughs> You won't go out on a limb. I won't go out on a limb. We'll find out in a moment. <laughs> Michael Weiss, the U.S. men's champion, next to his wife, Lisa, and his longtime coach, Andre Wiziger. Here's his quad toe. You can see that he, watch when he pole vaults off of the left toe, he gets all the way around. He does four complete turns, but watch the left toe right there. It touches down on the ice, and then he hits the ice again on the way back. The marks, please. Here's his For triple Michael flip, Weiss, triple toe combination. His right toe goes in, one, two, five, three, seven. good position, good five, reach eight. back, and a five, real six, nice triple toe afterwards. Five, six, five, now, six, he was after five, Elvis six, Stoiko, who was in third five, place. Six, Remember, Weiss started five, seven, the free skate in five, fourth, the first six. set of marks. Presentation. Five, seven. And now the five, second eight, set yes. for five, presentation, eight, they're good enough. Five, seven, Very five, interesting. Seven, oh, five, brother, six, is that five, going to cap his week? Michael oh, Weiss, the five, bronze eight. medalist Thank here you. in Helsinki. And the crowd has just realized it. Well, finally, finally, there is folks, Marjorie and Greg. Yep, and Greg finally stood up to cheer this time. That deserves a standing O. Well, that, that's a big moment when you first break into the medal category. 
Hyvä yleisö, tähän päättyy miesten kilpailu. The American flags flying high and Michael Weiss will stand on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes men's Here are the final standings from Helsinki. No question as to who is number one. Yagudin over Plashenko. Michael Weiss edging out Elvis Stoiko for the third spot. Now the other Americans, Timothy Gable finishes 12th, Trifon Zivanovic 16th, U.S. with two spots next year at Worlds. Let's join Leslie Visser right now. Terry, his coach, Audrey Wiziger, said there'd be no gifts tonight. He'd have to earn it, and that he did. Congratulations to you. What went well for you, Michael? Everything. <laughs> you know, this has been an, an incredible year. You know, um, when we planned our goals at the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to be consistent, and I need to backlog things and make sure that the judges have the confidence in me if I come and do do it at Worlds. And uh, I skated well all year, got the confidence of them, got the confidence in myself, and uh, skated three solid programs here. That was my goal. Skating last was tough. I had a long wait backstage, but uh, you know when they did the wave a little, it, it uh, kind of <laughs> broke the ice a little bit for me. Do you think coming here as American champion, that gives you new confidence? It sure does. Uh, the national title is, is a huge title in the United States to hold. Um, you know, that gave me a lot of confidence, but I think it started right at the beginning of the year. Skate America was a big competition for me to beat Elvis for the first time and Armanov and those people. And I just wanted to carry it through the world championships and be consistent. And that was my big goal. And I'm just, I can't be more psyched right now. Did you know coming here, the Russians are so strong. Did you know that you would medal here? I knew I knew I had a chance. I was coming here to skate my best, skate three solid programs. And I think uh, throughout three events, you're going to come up with the with the best three skaters because it's three of three programs as opposed to just two. So I came here knowing that I would have to do three solid programs, not just two. And, uh, you know, I was the one who who did that. That you did much to be proud of. Congratulations. Back to you, Terry. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. Dick and Brian, let's take a look at the head-to-head -head comparison in the battle for the gold medal. Well, on the quads, there was no doubt. Yagudin had it hands down because Plashenko put his hand down on his quadruple. And on the triples, I can't imagine that Yagudin could have done any triple in the program better. There was no flinch on anything. And I'd give the spins to Yagudin because overall they were far better than Plashenko's, although Plashenko did have that wonderful Bielman stretch. That was extraordinary. And on the footwork, even though Plashenko Plashenko tripped. His footwork was filled with abandon and it was tricky and fast. And finally, the artistry I'd give to Yagudin because overall his program was a far more mature, complete performance. And the judges agreed with you too. Another look at the quadruple jump that helped win Alexei Yagudin the gold medal. We saw seven clean quads in this competition, the most ever in one event. Back with a final word from Helsinki in a moment. Join us Saturday here on ABC as the ladies take the ice. Michelle Kwan beginning her run toward a third world title. It was an extraordinary night here in Helsinki on many accounts. If there's any question coming in, there isn't any longer. The quad is now a routine part of men's figure skating. For Michael Weiss, he's become a father, a national champion, and now a world bronze medalist all in the same season. Yevgeny Plashenko, he'll have another shot at becoming the youngest men's champion in history next year at the age of 17. But right now, it's Alexei Yagudin who stands atop the world. For Dick Button, Brian Boitano, and Leslie Visser, I'm Terry Gannon. Good night from Helsinki, Finland.